Proverbs 28 and 20, somebody say the faithful. Somebody say those who are steady. Somebody look at your neighbor and say it's time to go steady with Jesus. Somebody say predictably steady. Yeah, that means somebody with a holy habit. You, 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 can, you can track them by their habit. Somebody ought to say they hooked. Mm-hmm. Amen. The faithful, Proverbs 28, 20, shall abound with blessing. The word abound means it don't always look like the blessing, what people would call the blessing, but eventually they abound. It comes. It shows up. Somebody say, if you're going to be blessed by God, you got to be faithful to God. You got to be predictably consistent. Amen. You got to have a habit. People can track you by your habits. They know exactly. Amen. What you're going to do. And if they don't see you do that, they're thinking something's wrong. And I'm talking in reference to God. Somebody say the faithful. It don't say it there, but that's what it's talking about. The faithful to God shall abound with blessing from God. Proverbs 28 and 20. But then he said on in verse 20, but he that maketh haste, somebody say who's in a hurry to get rich will not be innocent. Amen. So God says those that's in a hurry to get blessed. Sometimes being faithful to God don't bring the blessing fast. And a lot of people want to get it real quick. Fast money. Some ought to say in hard time. <laughs> Go together. Amen. Because he said if you make haste to get rich, you do, you do it in a rush, in a hurry. Amen. That means you're going to cheat somebody along the way. You're going to steal from God, first of all, at the top of the list. You're going to rob God, Malachi 3.10. Amen. They said, where have we robbed you? In verses 8, he said, in tithes and offerings. Hello. And then he told them in verses 10, somebody say, bring it. Somebody say, don't get mad when the preacher's bringing it. Tell them, say, obey God. Bring it. Bring what? All the tithes and the offerings in the storehouse that they might be meat. Somebody say strong meat. Somebody say the word of God, the message of God might be heard, might be preached. And see if he'll not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You don't have room enough to receive it. So somebody say he'll pour you out a blessing. And that don't just mean he'll pour out a blessing to me. That means he'll make me the blessing he pours out. He'll distribute what he's blessed me with through me to others to help somebody else. This ain't about hoarding it all up for you and hey, come on somebody and getting a bigger this and a bigger that. Praise God. It's being able to be used by God, amen, to help somebody else and, and to touch somebody else with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to make sure this gospel gets praised. So everybody say the faithful. This is Proverbs 28 and 20. Shall abound with blessing. But he that's in a hurry to get rich will not be innocent. At the top of the not innocent list, those who live just to make another dollar will most likely cheat God. They won't give God what he requires of them. Hello? And some think because they give God his, it exempts them out from being obedient in present. In other words, they bring a present to God, a gift to God, but then they're always absent when it concerns his work his divine duty, his calling, his church, and his work. I've told people this, I'm going to say it again. Some of you need to come to church as much as your tithes do. You are to put a stamp on your, both of your cheeks, amen, and mail yourself to church. Somebody say your tithes ought not to show up more than you do. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't pay God off. Somebody say God can't be manipulated. He's not, he's not the big guy in the sky. Come on, somebody, you pay off. Amen. That's witchcraft. In Acts chapter 8, a witch named Simon said he wanted to do that. He tried to give the apostles money because he wanted the Holy Ghost power they had. He was walking among them like he was a convert, but he was a false convert. He was still a witch. Somebody say that witch didn't switch. Though he could say hallelujah and praise God. He made a lot of money with his witchcraft. He wanted power, but he didn't want a person of God. He didn't want to repent. That's why Peter had to speak up and say, you need to repent. Hallelujah, that means he was a false convert. He'd been baptized and walking with him, but he weren't right with God. All he cared about, amen, was getting power and getting notoriety and getting folks to look at him and make him more money. First Timothy 6 and 10 said it's the love of money. Somebody say the love of money. Now, I don't know about you, I like money because I like how it pays my bills. 
helps take care of my family. But to love it's another thing. Amen. Somebody say the love of money is the root of all evil. And God says those who have coveted after, meaning they've always got to have more. You better know your limit. Because Satan's always going to tempt you. Well, you know you could get more. If all you do live in your pursuit of so-called the American dream, look, that, look where that's got America. I'm going to pursue holiness, not happiness. Come on. Some people don't know their limits. And if you don't believe me, I watched a homeless person in Central Florida yesterday. Somebody gave them money. They walked in. The store got them two hash browns that didn't cost probably 80 cents a piece, maybe. I don't know. And they had wads of ones. And, and you know where they spent the rest? They didn't even get nothing to drink. They spent it at the big uh, gambling machine right there. Printing out lottery cards. Gambling. Going back and forth. And they ain't got nowhere to live. Two hash browns. They'd rather, come on somebody, think about it. And you may say, well, that's, that's, that's pretty rough, ain't it? That's, that's, that's sad. But a lot of people's the same way. Because I will promise you, the more you get, the enemy's going to tempt you, you need more. Amen. Somebody say, you better know where your limit's at. You don't make moves for money. I've told ministers this over and over. I've had preachers come to me and I've been doing this over 32 years. Say, so Brother Marvin, well, you know, they got a parsonage that comes with the church and uh, uh, I get this much a week in the check. It's a lot more than I'm making now. I ain't, they even provide insurance. And they go and start telling you all these long lists of benefits. And I said, what did the Holy Ghost say for you to do? Nobody wants to suffer for nothing. Nobody don't want to wait on God. And I ain't going to say nobody because it ain't everybody, but sometimes it feels like that way. Come on, friend, if you're judging by the way things feel in Luke, hey man, didn't Jacob, hey man, deceive? Oh, praise God, those he deceived, his own father. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's by the way I feel. Oh, Israel said, I didn't feel it. I, I, he felt different. He didn't feel like, you know, he felt like he saw and he didn't feel like Jacob a lot of times people are being led by their feelings and they're not following what the Holy Ghost is saying and they're judging it by the way the package is dressed up and the offer that's being made somebody say better is not always the best God told Moses, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh I'm going to harden his heart but I'm going to multiply my signs and wonders in Israel or in Egypt, rather. Exodus 7 and 3. God said, Moses, here's my perfect will. Go to Pharaoh. Preach to him. Say, thus saith the Lord, let my people go. But it ain't going to happen quick. But God says, the longer it takes and the more the enemy advances against you, he said, the more I'm going to multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Somebody say, that's how God multiplies. Somebody say, God multiplies after subtraction. And a lot of people don't want to go through subtraction. They don't want to give up nothing. They're too busy trying to get something more. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody say, that's the love of money. It is the breaking of the 10th commandment. Hey Amen. Thou shalt not covet because that covetousness. I got to have what somebody else has got. I got to have it like this. And the devil deceived so many in the church saying, boy, if I could get more, hey amen, I could give more to God. Yep, but the more you get, it seems like the further you get from God. Oh, well, I'm making money for God, but you can't never come to church. I'm making money for God, but you can't do what God called you to do because you're so busy in pursuit, in hot pursuit, I may say. And God says it's the love. And it ain't the word love that we understand the love to be the love of God. The love of money, First Timothy 6 and 10, it means the very lust to covet. I got to get more. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you better know your limit. Because there's a point going to come. Even in blessings from God, where if you ain't careful, you'll start using the blessing as an excuse to opt out from being obedient to God. Luke 14, one said, I got 12 yoke of oxen, excuse me from the supper you've had, God, invited me to, I got to go prove them. The next one said, I've bought me a piece of ground, I got some real estate, I gotta go look at it, have me excused. The third one just said, he didn't even say have me excused, he said, I've married me a wife.
In other words, God, you've blessed me so much. You've blessed me with a business. You've blessed me with income. You've blessed me with a family. And it's the oldest excuses in the book. They never change. Those are the same three excuses people use in some way or fashion or form or not to excuse themselves from God. But it's really nothing but a lie dressed up in the skin of excuse because the Bible didn't say they had an excuse. It said they made it up. Hello? Lord, you've blessed me too much. So, have me excused. That one man, that tops all. Jesus didn't even bring up no more after that third one. He said, I've married me a wife. He, and if he married him a wife, he had to have him some children later on. Come on. So, he used his family to excuse himself. Amen. From being obedient to God. And after a while, I've watched more people. I'll tell you what. I, I'm not as concerned about people. You know, spiritually, who are having to go through stuff, but it's when people start getting prophesied to and getting blessed and God starts increasing. God says when riches increase, don't set your heart on them. Psalm 62 and 10, a lot of people set their heart on them. The rich is God's blessing. Proverbs 10, 22 said in the word of the Lord, he said, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. And rich don't mean monetarily like we would think. Rich just means blessed from God. Amen. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, makes you blessed from God and adds no sorrow to it. Somebody say adds no sorrow to it. Debt, sorrow. A lot of people's in so much debt because they couldn't, amen, decide, amen, to wait on God. And a lot of times people approach God in prayer, amen, and they already got their mind made up, already got their heart made up, what they going to do, and then they pray not very long. They spend more time with Google than they do God researching and searching out their decision they've already made up in their mind they want to do. And they a lot of times look for a soothsayer to tell them just what they want to do. Amen. Y'all watch me right here in this altar and look at somebody and shake my head and say, God said no. Amen. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? But a lot of times people's already spent more time on Google. They have searched out every reason, you know, reasonable why they should do what they should do financially and what they should do because of finances. Amen. Somebody say, you better make your decisions because of faith in God not the finances of this world. And I see them go off the radar, the God radar, the godly, the presence of God radar, and they get out of the will of God. Come on, somebody. And it said in 1 Timothy 6 and 10, it pierces them through, causes them to err from the faith. Everybody say, it's not wrong for me to have things. When it's wrong is when things have me. When the things are my pursuit, not God. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Somebody say, seek God first. Amen. Seek him with an open heart. Don't go to God with your decision already made. Be careful. God will let you have what you want. It said in Numbers 11 and 4, they fell by lust in the wilderness. He gave them the leanness of their heart. They complained long enough. He let them have what they wanted and they was throwing up by the afternoon. Hey man, that that quail, that meat was coming out of their nose. That means they was throwing up. You know, it tasted good for a minute. It was fun for a little bit, but they missed God. They couldn't wait on God and God let them have what they want. And listen, I'm gonna, I wanna, before we get into the main message this morning, this this is the offering time, by the way. Um, Matthew chapter four, verse eight through verses 10. I promised you, we can't promise you a lot, but we promise you preaching. Matthew 4, verses 8 through 10, it said in Satan, it's talking about taking Jesus. The devil taking Jesus. He was being tempted in the wilderness, 40 days, 40 nights. The devil taketh him up to a high place in the mountains, and he showed him all the worlds, the kingdoms of this world and their glory. And in verses 9, he told Jesus, if you'll fall down and worship me. Notice he didn't say just kneel down, fall down. The enemy is, he's so desirous to see the saint fall. To even tempt the Savior, how dumb could you be? For the Savior, fall down and worship me. He said, I'll give you all these things. Somebody say, the devil can give you stuff too. He can give you prosperity. Hello? Sister Soothsayer, 
come on, that reads the palms and wants you to take your palm and reach in your wallet and pay her afterwards and tell you whatever you want her to tell you. Well, Brother Marvin, they prophesied to me and it happened. Read Deuteronomy 13. God said if a false prophet or a dreamer of dreams, somebody say a witch, rises among you and tells you something gives you a dream or one or a sign and it come to pass but it leads you astray after other gods god says don't follow hello he said because the lord god seeks to prove your heart to see if you really his or not there's a lot of people saying well they said it to me and it happened you see the advertisements come on somebody on tv the preachers you know the prophets that can't preach but they're always trying to manipulate the crowds for another dollar bill come on come, come on send me a thousand dollars and get this genuine leather purse I, I got up in the motel room where I was at in revival years ago and I it was late night I got up go to the bathroom brother Danny and that so-called prophet was on tv prophet liar yeah Amen. He was on there prophesying and he was saying, if you'll buy this leather, genuine leather purse, God's going to give you a thousand dollars. I shouted at him before I turned the TV off. I said, if, if you can get a thousand dollars for that purse, you ought to keep all them purses. <laughs> Send me a thousand dollars and you can take this green piece of cloth and put it in your pocket. And God's going to bless you with a lot of money. And then you'll see all them testimonies. I don't doubt them. I don't doubt them testimonies. Some people say, ain't true. Yeah, it is. Boy, I got $144,000. I got a... And, they all, and that's all they talk about. You don't hear nothing about repenting of your sin. You don't hear nothing about eternity, heaven or hell. You don't hear nothing about faith in Jesus for your soul and where you're going to spend eternity at. Come on, it's all about monetary things. It's all about here and now, not the hereafter. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? And people are so-called getting blessed, but it's leading them away from the truth. It's leading them away from the gospel. You can send all the money you want to and drink all the spring water you can stand to drink and... And anoint yourself with all the so-called special oil and all the colored claws put in your wallet and in your purse and get blessed, blessed if you want to. But how good is the blessing if you spend eternity separated from God because the soothsayer never told you about a cross. He never preached to you about the blood of the Lamb. He never warned you about eternity separated from God. That's why the prophets warn they will manipulate, they'll merchandise the people. So we're not here merchandising. Yeah. Some people say, Brother Marvin, be careful preaching like that. Somebody may see their ceiling, may see their limit, and then you won't be able to have blessings from them like you used to because they'll no longer be working at that level or doing that level. I've had people repent when they hear me preach like this. And the enemy tried to tell me, he said, well, they won't be able to give it to you like they did. Listen, I'm not manipulated. I'm not a witch. If God can't take care of me and what he called me to do, hey man, Lord, I got the doors need to be shut and I need to go find something else to do. But I've been doing this over 32 years and he don't support us off of one person. He's the God. Hey man, we're his hand God. He provides. And I'm telling you today, hallelujah, be careful, hear the word warning, hear the word of woe amen, Matthew 4 9, Satan tempted the son of God and if he can tempt the savior to do it, don't you think for a moment he won't try to tempt the sheep to do it and many of them fall amen. for the glories of the world for the increase of the world fall down and worship me somebody say could it be God defines that Satan worship too. Worldliness. Pursuit of the world. Got to have more. Got to get more. Got to get more. Got to get more. And Jesus, you know what Jesus told him in Matthew 14? He said, get behind me, Satan. Somebody said, get behind me, Satan. I don't know who I'm preaching to. The enemy's got in front of you and he's dressed up in sheep's clothing. Mm, I hear the Holy Ghost. Matthew 7. 15 said he's come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly he's a ravenous wolf who the false prophet the false prophet don't have to be a personality a figure it can be just that spirit that doctrine of devil that's thought that thought it comes to you dressed up oh this is Jesus don't you feel it don't it feel good a lot of people are feeling good but still ain't following God 
Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost, and that thing just dresses up in front of you, and oh boy, it presents to you. I've had them come to me, leave this ministry, walk away after saying for months and years what God said for them to do, and now somehow God's counteracting what he said and changed his mind, and their defense is, but look what's happening. It's all happening good. Somebody say it's just short term. It won't last. Hallelujah. You better listen to somebody. I don't claim to been in it and be perfect at it. Hallelujah. But I'm seasoned enough that after 32 years now, you better listen. Hey man, ever these little flash, hey man, by night, hey man, social media hashtag prophets that come along here and hit and miss. Come on and go along. They'll tell you what you want to hear so they can get more of this from you. I'm not trying to get more of this from you. Matter of faith, you may have to make a decision that don't create more of that. But somebody shout, there's a blessing. Hey man, that adds no sorrow to it. And it's called the will of God. I'd rather have less in being God's will and God be able to use me than to have more. Amen. And they some people in the name of Christianity, in the name of they say, quote unquote, serving the Lord, are doing what they're doing. And they say, because God called me to give to the church. Wrong. If you're doing something that takes you away from his business in his church, that ain't God, that is the devil. That'll get you eventually. That'll get you and it's already sucking you in. It's already giving you excuse after excuse why you can't do nothing for God when it's time to be with God's people and in God's kingdom. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Anybody hear the spirit of truth? I know we live in an hour. Folk don't want to hear stuff like this. But the devil can give you stuff too. He can give you prosperity too. All he cares about is if you walk away from God. If he can get you to leave the faith. And get your focus on something more important to you than God. And Jesus not be first. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I didn't plan to, but he did. So I make no apologies for it. I know most don't take that long doing an offering, but I, uh, here's my note. Amen. I want to be blessed by God, not just prosperous in the world. Who cares about the prosperity of the world? It's going to perish. It ain't going to last. I want to, somebody say blessed by God is being in his perfect will, being in his presence. That's blessing. And sometimes, that's why Moses said, Lord, if you don't carry me up, hence, he said, I'd rather stay down here in this low place. That's Exodus 33, 15. I kind of, you know, use my own interpretation there. But Moses was telling God, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go up. Somebody say, if God ain't with me, I don't want promotion. I don't want no promotion. I don't want no prosperity without the presence of God. My God, the church has existed as long as it has and come to where it is, not by high rise steeples and fancy cars and suits and big time ministries. No, I'll go ahead and tell you there's more low income, amen, small congregations, amen, that's kept the church alive in existence to this hour. I'm not telling you God can't bless you, amen, with wealth, but I'll go ahead and tell you by the spirit of truth, hallelujah, give me Jesus and you can have this world. I'd rather have Jesus, amen, than have this world. You can keep all the silver and keep all the gold, but give me the cross. Give me the power of the Holy Ghost. Peter and John was at the gate called Beautiful in Acts 3 and 6 said, we ain't got no silver and gold. We ain't got no glittery. We ain't got no shiny. We about broke. They weren't about. They was. They said we didn't have none. But as such as we have, we give unto you in the name of Jesus. And they took that lame man by the hand and raised him up. And the man who had never walked started leaping through the temple, glorifying God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. What's that little video that went viral? Little kids doing a math lesson. He's adding up or she's adding up. I don't remember. And what was it? What was the end of you was a teacher too. <laughs> she was adding up some kind of money and wanted to know what she had now. She broke. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But I was trying to think what the name of who she said was broke. Yeah, yeah. You know how the little math uh, problems, they create them. That, just for the sake of it. Jenny's got a dollar and three cents 
and it was trying to add up and the, the little kids <laughs> instead of bringing up the you know the math of it and adding up what she's got left <laughs> Jenny's broke <laughs> hallelujah Amen. But Paul and Silas, they didn't have a dollar and three cents. <laughs> they didn't have nothing. And yet Judas betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, Matthew 27. Jaden, that's right, Lynn's on the, on the uh, security camera. Jaden, yeah, Jaden broke. <laughs> that's what it said. Hallelujah. But in Matthew 27, Judas betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And y'all have heard me say this. Any good teacher would Bears repeating himself, a hundred and ninety-seven dollars and forty cents is what that accounts to in our hour. Jesus weren't even worth two hundred dollars to Judas. A lot of people selling out Jesus for a whole lot more. And a lot of times it ain't the less, it's the more. The more they get, the more they gotta have. Somebody say, You better ask God what your limit is lest it take you from the faith. If you're watching and you want to give, so it can be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, overflow of men, given to your bosom, Luke 6, 38. I ain't promising you nothing. I'm just telling you God will give back. And that's his business, not Marvin's. Amen. We'll give this and we'll say, no, we ain't got no purses. We ain't got no green prosperity cloths. We got a bunch of prayer cloths. they for free. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. No special gifts. No special treatments. I had a man tell me one time back at the church, well, I gave this much to your mentor, and he was going to try to tell me what to preach. I said, brother, last time in front of my name, you didn't see which, did you? I am not a witch. You can't buy, you can't pay me to say what you want me to say. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're watching and you want to give through the mail, 2913 Albany Avenue, Waycross, Georgia, zip codes 31503. It's already in the comments on the live stream. You'll see it in the edited, you know, versions of it. You'll see it come up on the screen right now while I'm talking. And uh, also you can use the cash app. Remember, it's all capitalized. Use the cash symbol. It's Acts 29 Church. Acts 29 Church, put the cash symbol in front of it. You can give that way. That's the most popular way electronically that people give. They'd even do it while they're sitting in their seats. People do it before they get to church, sometimes on Sunday, afterwards, whenever. Praise God, from wherever. Amen. Or you can go to MarvinBoothMinistries.com. Make sure it's the second page. Everybody say the second page. MarvinBoothMinistries.com. Use the second page, and you can log on there securely through PayPal, and you can give there too. Amen. Through the internet. And uh, so we've never had any problems with it. Some say, well, that ain't secure. It has been thus far, and I've been using it for probably 12 years or more, personally in my own ministry and as well in this ministry. And, uh